This Plinko feature video will cover rules. Plinko offers a complete rules engine for validating business entities, and this engine is very customizable. Rules may be configured with attributes on the entity's metadata classes, or programmatically using partial methods on the entities themselves. Rule types include validation rules as well as assignment rules that can be used to set or update properties on the entity. The rules will be run automatically on a data context submit changes, or they can be called manually at any time. This demonstration will be using a slightly modified tracker sample application. The standard solution can be downloaded from codesmith.googlecode.com. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a unit test that's going to show us the automated execution of the Plinko rules, and that is by creating an entity and then submitting that for, through changes in the data context. Every time a submit changes is called on a Plinko data context, the rules will automatically be run against every single entity that is being altered. So in this case, we're going to create an invalid user, try to insert that into the database, and then catch the broken rules. After we've caught the broken rules, we're going to go back and look and see where they came from. So let's begin by running this test with the debugger. So let's go ahead and clear a little space out of my debugger here. Now we're going to step through this one at a time. We're going to create a user, and all we're going to set is the email address. We're going to tell it to be insert it on submit, and when we submit changes, a broken rule exception is going to be thrown. When we catch this collection, we can step inside of it, and we can notice that there is a broken rules collection on the exception. This collection contains all the rules that were broken when submit changes was called. So in this case, we have four broken rules, and if we look through them, we can see the message of what broke, so password hash is required field, and we can see from digging deeper exactly what rule was broken, the fact that success was false, and we can even see what tracked object we were looking at. So when we dig down into the tracked object, we can see not only the original value, which in this case because it was a new entity there was none, but we can see that it's a new value, and we can see that, that tracked object itself. And so notice it was the Spock object that we created a moment ago. So the password hash was required, and if we look at the rest of the collection, we can see the password salt was required, the first name field is required, and the last name field is required as well. Also notice that to give this information back to your users, you can just call a very simple toString against the broken rules collection, or I'm sorry, against the exception itself, and if we look inside of our trace, we can see that a very nice string form of this exception has been created for us. It's told us that there have been four broken rules, the broken rules happened against the type of user, showed the four error messages, and it even showed the state of the user that was invalid. And sure enough, by looking at that, we can see that things like first name and last name were blank, even though they are a required field. So let's step out of the unit test now and go look at where all those rules came from. So now all the rules that have run so far have been configurable from the metadata class on the user. So when we look at some of the properties in here, we can see the required tag has been added to email address, first name, last name, and the password hash and password salt. These were all things that we saw come back as failed rules when we did the submit earlier. That's because we left these fields blank, and Plinko looked at the metadata attributes and realized that they were required. But there are more rules than that running in here right now. These now attributes on, si excuse me, on the create date and the modified date are not validation attributes, they're actually assignment attributes, which means that instead of being used to validate the entity state, they're actually being used to update fields. In this case, the create date is being updated whenever the entity state is new, and the modified date is being updated whenever the entity state is dirty. So now that we know where these rules are coming from, the metadata class, let's go back into our unit test and see the assignment rules in action. So rather than use our automatic ex execution test again, let's go ahead and use our manual execution test. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a data context and create a user, so basically the same thing we did before, only this time, rather than trying to insert on submit and calling a submit changes in order to trigger the rules engine, we're going to run them manually. And we do that by using the data context rule manager object and calling run against our entity. So again, these are the same rules that would run as if we were submitting changes, only here we're calling them manually. So let's go ahead and run this test. We're going to step down and create our user. Now if we look at this user, we can see that the create date and the modified date are both 1-1-year-1. One, one, one. Now this is because we didn't assign those date time values anything when we created the entity. However, we know that these properties have assignment rules running against them when we run the rules engine. 
So in this case, because we didn't say insert on submit, the rules engine isn't going to know this is a new entity, so the create date will not get updated, but the modified date will get updated because this entity is dirty, there have been changes made to it. So let's go ahead and see that. And we step over that run, and we can see that it's given back the result of false, so the rules failed as we expected them to. And if we look back at the user, the create date, again, has not been updated because it didn't know it was a new entity. However, the modified date was updated to the current date time. And again, this is because of the assignment rule that is on the property in the user's metadata class. So, we've now run our rules automatically using a submit changes on the data context. We've also run our rules manually using the rule manager on a data context. We've seen where these rules have come from inside the attributes of the metadata class on the entity. And we've seen the difference between a validation rule, such as required, and an assignment rule, such as the now rule, using entity state. Now, notice that this email address here is different than the one I'd entered above. I originally had entered Spock at StarTrek.com, and this is just Spock. So here, we actually have an additional rule that's been broken. The count is 5 instead of 4. And if we look through these, and I'm not sure which one it's going to be, here we go. It's telling us that the email address is not valid. This is actually a programmatic rule that we have created. So, let's exit the debugger and go look at where that programmatic rule came from. So if we step back into our user, we can see there's the required attribute and the data annotations data type attribute on the email address, but neither of these is validating the actual email address itself. To do that, we've added a custom programmatic rule, and inside of the static partial method here called add shared rules on the user entity, we can add rules manually to the rule manager to be run for this entity. So in this case, we're adding to the rules manager a rule for the user object, and that rule is the user email rule. So if we go to the definition of that, we can see that all we've done is create a very simple class that implements the iRule interface. This interface is fairly straightforward. It only has to implement a few things. A priority to tell the rules what order to run in. In this case, we're going to say one like most of the other rules, and those should all be run at the first chance they get. Otherwise, these could be specified to run in a specific order. A target property. So in this case, we're validating the email address, an error message, which we could populate programmatically, but if this rule fails, it will always just be because the email address is not valid. And by the way, this is the message we saw earlier when we were looking at our unit test failure. And then the only remotely complicated part of the rule, the actual run method. Now this takes in a rule context. The context is going to keep your tracked object, among other things. And inside of the tracked object, object, <laughs> there's going to be the current value for the entity as well as the previous value for the entity. So in this case, we just want to look at the current value. So we get that and cast it to type user because this rule should only be run against user objects as we specified earlier in the add shared rule method. And then we have a regular expression here that is going to validate an email address. Now this is very simple. It's just saying there should be some words and an at symbol and then some words and a period followed by some more words. So something at something.com or net, etc. And all we're going to do is take that user's email address and run it through the email regex. And we're going to put that result as the context success. So if this succeeds, when the context goes back to the rule manager, it'll say the rule is passed. If it fails, it's going to add it to the broken rules collection, and we're going to see it like we did earlier. And so that is how easy it is to implement a custom rule with Plinko. You just implement the iRule interface, return your result on the context.success, make sure to add that rule, which we recommend adding it inside of the add shared rules partial method on the entity itself. And that is just done by calling the rule manager dot add shared and specifying your type and your rule. And then whenever the rules get executed, whether they be automatically with the submit changes or called manually from the rule manager, that rule will run against your entity. So let's just do a very quick recap since we did just cover a lot of little things. Rules on your business entities will automatically be executed every time you do a submit changes on a data context. If they fail, a broken rule exception will be thrown through which you can traverse the broken rules collection to see specifically what rules broke on what entities and their states. The rules can also be manually called by doing a data context.rulemanager.run and passing in the entity. These rules are configured using the metadata class on the entity itself. And the attribute rules can include validation rules, as well as assignment rules that will actually update properties when uh, the rules are run. But also, they can be configured by using the rule manager's add shared rule method and passing in a class that you can implement iRule with that will run a programmatic and custom rule. And that concludes this video over Plinko rules. We hope you found it to be both helpful and informative. To watch more Plinko feature videos, visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you for using Plinko.